Okay, here we go. Oh my God! We're gonna give you Map Strong. For, did I freak you guys out? Relax, everybody. This is gonna be a great show today, and we're gonna give away something for free because that's what we do all the time. Here's what you get for free: Map Strong, one of our most popular workout programs. Here's how you can win that program for free. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Tell us a fun story. Make a good comment. I don't care. Make it good. If we pick it, we'll notify you. And then you'll win Map Strong for free. Isn't that awesome? You also need to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Also, before we start this podcast, we are running a brand new sale because it's August. Uh, two programs on sale, two great muscle building programs on sale. Map Strong, Maps Powerlift, both 50% off. Check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. You know, so every once in a while I'll go on our YouTube channel and read like comments of people, you know, what people are saying and stuff. Oh, Got a great comment funny. that resonated so strongly with me. Once I read it, you guys will know why. Okay. It yeah, right, why it resonated. So I forgot which video this was on. Um, I want to say it was the, had a like, Get build muscle on a budget. I think it was the, that oh, last yeah. one right there. Yeah. And this guy says, I love your guys' content. I'm 14 and I used to get made fun of because I'm skinny. Mm. And I started working out five months ago. And the first three months, I was lost until I found you guys. So thanks a lot. I went from 119 to 135 pounds. And now people aren't saying I'm weak and skinny. You guys have changed my fitness experience. Hey, so, yeah, thanks yeah, a buddy. Lot. How great is that? Shout that kid's handle out. What is it? it uh, give, him some, give him some love. Yeah, let me pull it up again. On YouTube, it's uh, Washi. Uh, you know, W A Washi. H I. Yeah, W A S H I. I'm. Um, you know, we talked about like one of the things that we we've been most proud of as far as the business was when we when we designed Maps Prime and Prime Pro. I thought well, I think we all agreed that was like. The, like one of the newest like things I feel most proud of with this business was actually surviving YouTube. Oh <laughs> said, yeah, I'm serious. Like you, the, a lot of you are cunts, man. I'm like YouTube, <laughs> YouTube is full of fucking trolls, man. You know when just, I first they are hard. Oh man. dude, when I first yeah, learned that it's proving grounds, I forgot. I think it was one of our first workout videos <laughs> that we did on there. And you know, I'm, I'm in my by that time. At that time, I was in my late 30s. I'm you know pretty confident. I think I've dealt with my you know, body image issues, right? And we posted that video and like one of the comments, this is all it said, weak chest. <laughs> I know. I've been leaning into that for since then. <laughs> I know. I was like, wow, dude. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, no, YouTube's tough, oh, yeah. man. So I, it's so cool to see the response that yeah. the show is getting because to your point, we started the uh, exercise channel, right? So if you're watching the podcast and you haven't been over to Mind Pump TV, we have a channel that's got half a million subscribers over there that we do exercise demos. And people were just brutal when we launched that and put that out there. And, you know, when we started to do the podcast, yeah. I thought, oh, man, I just I was mentally preparing myself, you know, that to not let the, the trolls yeah. get to me yeah. and fire back. But I, but I like reading stuff like this because obviously it's a, it's a teenage kid. And boy, teenage years are tough, right? That's when you're mm -hmm. kind of finding who you are. That's your formative years. Yeah. yeah, you're feeling insecure. Everybody has, you know, issues, I guess, uh, to one degree or another when they're teenagers. But I like this because, you know, this kid is like, oh, I was bullied or whatever. And he's – now the part that's, you know, cool but isn't – that's not super exciting. Okay, he worked out, changed his body. That's great. Here's what's exciting though is he's learned a lesson that he can, he can make choices in his actions to change things or to improve things. And that's right. what exercise teaches you. So to read that, it's like, man, he's learning a valuable lesson. You know, oh this. yeah, and it, it resonates, you know, because I think we all kind of experienced that too, like being the skinny kid. Uh, and uh, I remember because my brother was two years older than me too, and you know, there's a lot of his friends and that would come over and you know punk me, and uh, that was just one of those things. It's uh, to to work out and get stronger and and, and bigger made a massive difference. It, it just really kind of gave you that confidence um, that I, I never had before. I, I started lifting weights. So it's it's encouraging to see young young boys, you know, still, you know, getting after it and, and you know, getting that kind of, con gaining that confidence by doing something like working out. Well, totally. talking about YouTube and comments and young guys and stuff like that, you know, something that uh, Andrew taught me yesterday. So I was talking to him about, 
uh, not being able to read sarcasm. I was like, we should have like a sarcasm font because right. so, like we were, you know, we jab each other quite a bit. So a lot of times I don't know if someone's just playing on, on YouTube. I saw mm -hmm. that comment yeah. where someone said something. And then yeah, you, someone's talking shit about my outfit, right? Yeah, and so you hit I, him back. Yeah, so I hit him back and then they, they came back and was like, I'm just being sarcastic. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, I can't tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if someone fires at me, I'm going to fire yeah. back. But so he tells me there actually is a way that people type and I don't know if this is like universal or is what. Is this where they go upper lower case? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So when someone does upper lower upper lower, is that right, Andrew? Yeah. So that's he. He says if they, if they do upper lower upper lower, that's supposed to be sarcastic. So oh. if you're talking shit, yeah. just being funny, sarcastic, uppercase lowercase, then I'll know. But I'll otherwise, I'm that. gonna fire back yeah. at you. You talk some shit. <laughs> I guess it too. It's like what you kind of see in terms of memes and whatnot. But I always saw that as like a, a way that. There was there was like a lot of insulting like memes and things towards you know the left that was using the every time like you know one one of them would 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 talk or have like a video out they would have like that text yeah you know follow that so I guess that's yeah. just in general just making fun of people yeah like, or a sarcastic, sarcastic voice right that's yeah. what you're you're yeah. being sarcastic when you're you're uh, mimicking them by by whatever quoting yeah. they they or quoting whatever they said right I, I guess that's the theory how funny is that though that memes have become sense. the most powerful form of communication that exists it, oh yeah by far well, by because far. you can convey so much immediately and they're and they're shareable well, what the was, political cartoons I was just going to say I was just going to ask you what the history was on political cartoons as far as like how much were they uh you know valued or used was it obviously they've been in newspapers forever, forever. very instrumental extremely instrumental okay. very powerful uh, newspapers realized it very quickly because they'd post a cartoon either depicting a president as uh, god let me think uh, Teddy Roosevelt you know like a walrus with a mustache or mm -hmm. whatever um, or they talk about like the fat cats, uh, you know, where they're with their big tuxedos getting, you know, fed a bunch of stuff while people are starving. Like these are all old political cartoons and they circulated so quickly and they, people realize very, very fast that this is a very effective form of communication. Memes are like that. Nothing spreads fast. In fact, well, and you would trace that all the way back to even further, right? If you were to see, cause I've heard you say that, uh, that, that originated with like gestures, right? That oh was, yeah. yeah. That was how that started. Yeah. They, but this they, is, they, this is about print. You know, yeah. something mm -hmm. in print that you can share. Well, this was before print. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. But the, there's like, for example, I'll see this, right? I'll get a meme and it's a fitness meme. Typically, people will send me funny fit fitness memes. And then within a day or two, I'll get 100 people sending me that same. It's how fast. Like there's one where there's a dude, he's like sweating, kind of an overweight guy. And he's looking in the mirror and he's like big old sweat down his shirt. And it says, all right, man. I just I'm I'm done taking a shit now I'm ready to start working oh, out. Yeah, you guys it. see that one? I saw, I saw it the other day. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the funny part about that is though the the lifespan of them is so short. Like mm -hmm. you try sending that to like your son or someone who's younger generation. Oh, he always tells and me, and it's how. two days late. Yeah, I know. It's like you you can't even. It's well, not funny anymore. It's like you, not only you got to be one of the first to send it to people yep. for it to have value. Otherwise, people are like, oh, that's so. Tuesday, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and they start with, with with meme culture and all this stuff. It's like they start referring back to old memes. So it's like if you if you're not on the up and up, like I don't know what all these like frogs and you know these crying guys and whatever you know dog uh, images mean, unless you actually know like where it stemmed from because they do memes on memes. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's, it turns into like uh, I'm memeing with the meme that memed this. Was yeah. it Reddit that blew it up first? Who uh, I mean, is that where the memes like really started to blow up? No, remember I, mean, I used to call it a meme. I mean, yeah, I remember that. Too. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. Meme. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, so that was six, seven years ago. The first meme. time I ever seen it. Reddit, I think, is where you'll get like the newest ones. But I mean, back in the day, I didn't even know Reddit existed. I don't even know if it existed back then. But I would go on other sites and, and pull them up. Bodybuilding.com used to share a lot of memes. Remember oh, really? bodybuilding.com forums? Mm. I don't remember memes been there. Oh yeah, there were like sub Although categories hanging there that often, and you could go in and pick up. It. This is where, back when you. Where is that company right now, Doug? Can you do a little search on me and find out how they're doing? Are they? They, they used to be one of the most Amazon, weren't they? They were like one of the yeah. most powerful companies in the fitness space. Yeah, because no, of period. They yeah. used to be one of the most visited websites. Who was it that period. we talked to that one time that? Actually, pulled up the analytics on the the traffic that the website used to get. Doug did. Mm -hmm. No, was it you, Doug, who did that? Yeah. Oh, it was you. Yeah. I thought we were talking. I think it was some... Alexa is a uh, app that you can use to see what their traffic is. It was like, I mean, it was like a cliff. 
Yes. I mean, and it was, I don't know, what, seven, six, six years ago, six, seven years ago when it when it started? Yeah. And it's like just dramatically. Yeah, and well, Amazon crushed the supplement that, space. That's it, yeah. And then the second thing is that the forums that were really popular were forums that would talk about kind of taboo topics like steroids and how to take mm -hmm. them or whatever. Yeah. And then Google, which is the number one search engine, started kind of censoring that kind of stuff a little bit. So it made it harder to to search and go through there. Uh, and um, so well, originally just, they had this brilliant model, right? You offered all kinds of free uh, content around exercise and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And you had all these other, you know, famous fitness people that were providing free content for the platform. And all bodybuilding.com wanted was the traffic because they knew if they were, if the millions of people were coming to their site every day that a percentage of those people would buy supplements. And then they sold other people, just like a supplement store. Yep. They sold other brands and supplements where they probably made 10 to 20 percent on that and then they sold their own brand which is where they had their margins were probably 80 90 percent yeah. of the money they yeah wanted. what killed them was not the prices because they had decent prices amazon's got great prices of course it was the shipping because uh, amazon had has next prime day. Yeah. next yeah. day how do you beat that yeah next day and as good of a price or yeah, better or, to or, or you pay no shipping because yeah. of prime you yeah. know and that just to, and remember they had uh i don't even does body space still exist do you guys remember that? Body space. No. So this was, a, I think it was a bodybuilding.com body uh, social media attempt. And they had something called, remember, okay, so it was obviously named after MySpace. Yeah. So it was body space and you would post your picture and you'd have a profile and then Are you sure it was called body space? I think so. Maybe I, Doug can look I at think it. I know what you're talking about. It was right when I was competing. Is that when you are talking about when it was going on? I believe so. So it was like a social yeah. media just It wasn't for called Body Space. Fitness? It was called something else. Was it? Yeah, if you actually- Let me see. If you Google, there's actually, that still, well, there's posts. Someone made a made a profile of me on that channel. Wait, wait, wait. Um, made, made a profile of you? <laughs> yeah, using my images and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's called- Is this the one where like no, in it's... Kuwait, there's a huge poster of you? Oh, that's you? not what I'm thinking of. That is, is it. Is that what you're thinking yeah, of? Yeah, see, that's bodybuilding.com. Oh, that's not what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's a social uh, social fitness app. I guess it still exists. Huh. I wonder how popular it is. I don't know anybody that uses that. Yeah. Interesting, right? Uh, it is. Yeah. Anyway, you guys want to hear some uh, some embarrassing stuff? Always. For me? Yes, Always. please. So, uh, so uh, I'll give you the backstory. So, I have every once in a great while, I'll get really bad vertigo. So, you guys remember? I think it was like three years ago mm -hmm. when I got vertigo hella bad one day, and then I came into work and I was just a mess from it. So, again, this happened last night, right? So, I turned too quickly in bed, and so for people that don't know, certain types of vertigo can get affected. There's these crystals that float around in the inner ear, one of them can get dislodged and it can create this crazy sensation that you're literally spinning or moving. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, it's the worst feeling. You just, you want to throw up. I've had it so bad where it made me throw up several times in a row right away. Last night's was bad. It wasn't that bad, but it was really bad. So I just laid steady, fell back asleep, woke up this morning. It was gross. So I did these Epley maneuvers, which uh, is this head positional technique that gets the crystal to move in the right position. I actually bought this hat, by the way. It's the dorkiest looking thing in the world. <laughs> and it's got like this like floating little thing in it that allows you to move your head in the right position to do the Epley maneuver. Video, oh, please. please. Yes, yeah, please bro. share a picture It of is this. literally <laughs> the most, like I will never show this thing. But no, anyway. you have to. That so and I, your headgear. Yeah, so, and I had to do like three rounds of this Epley. And when you do the first one, oh, your eyes do this. Do, 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 do. It's terrible, terrible feeling. So anyway, I was feeling pretty crappy this morning. Jessica gets up, she goes downstairs, makes herself some coffee, and she's having a nice quiet morning for, you know, for herself, which this is me, my uh, self-aware, non-egoic version of myself talking now. She totally deserves. She needs it. She never gets this time. The baby's always around her, on her. She never gets this time. Anyway, I'm feeling crappy, right? So I get up and I'm like, oh, do my thing. I'm late. You know, I, I planned on coming in, doing a long leg workout. I only got to do about 45 minutes. So I'm like kind of rushing and I go downstairs and I'm like, you know, hey, do you, you know, you want me to make you some breakfast? She's like, yeah. So I'm like making her some breakfast real quick and I'm kind of feeling crappy. And so I give her some shit, you know, so I'm like, I kind of acted funny. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, you know, I made you breakfast. Like you didn't even put my lunch in the, in the, in my bag for me or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and by, by the way, okay, I'm not speaking for every man, but most guys, when we feel crappy, we kind of become babies. Let's oh, be I'm like a, I'm a pain in the ass. Yeah, like I like I, I want to be I want to feel you know nurtured or babied a little bit. Yeah, and and if I'm not, then I'll start feeling stupid. So anyway, 
that's what came out, right? So she felt like, excuse me, like what's going on? I never get a chance that she finally got like a 30 minute workout. She really hard for her to get in. So I made her feel real bad. And like, you know, five minutes later, I feel terrible. So I apologize, but she already feels bad, right? So just a, a lesson here. Uh, that's right. Put the sandwich in the bag, Jessica. No, that's Put not what it is. Put the sandwich in the bag. It's simple. That's not what it is. You know, <laughs> that's your lesson. That's the lesson. Okay. If you're watching this, that's at the end of the oh, day. Man. Put the goddamn sandwich yeah. in the yeah, bag. It's Dude, a you know simple, what? you know, loving thing to yeah, do. Yeah. You know what it is? It's, and you said this a while ago when you guys first had Max. Yeah. You, you kept saying how much you missed. Katrina. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's because you just they're just without a baby, there's so much time you can spend with each yeah. other. And then when there's a kid, it's never going to be like the that. The irony totally of that fine. is though you don't see that until you have the kid. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? It, I think I've heard that said to me a hundred times. It falls on deaf ears. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's been told to me a hundred times, and you know, I would be, I would just, no, I'm already so busy. I've already, and then all of a sudden, you have a child, and you realize, like, holy shit! Oh, I understand shit, what much. busy really is. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I know what free free time used to be. So yeah. you know, I don't think anybody realized it till you actually have the. Kid. Yeah. So do you get like something in your ear, like water, or like how does it, this like occur with you know keep happening? No idea. It happens to me once every couple years two to three years or so yeah and how does somebody know they actually have that and they're not just kind of dizzy or like what's what well, okay so have you, do you get diagnosed with it like do you go in and then I, so i did years ago okay so i used to train an ear nose and throat specialist uh dr rufo rufio i think i forgot his, his name uh, anyway great morrow was his first name great guy and he uh, he's the one that diagnosed me so he put me in a dr. position Rufy. just to see how my what would happen and my eyes did the they do this thing where they They'll go back and forth. It's a terrible feeling. And uh, he's like, yeah, you've got, you know, be, be not benign positional something. It's a type of vertigo. Uh, but that's how you'll know. And you can test if it's your left ear or your right ear mm. where it's coming from. So that's pretty much it. And I guess people, some people are more susceptible. But there's car, so there's car sickness. You ever been car sick? Yeah. Okay. So it's like that, except also the world is moving. Like, if it's really bad, I literally can't stand. It's like yeah. everything is spinning. It's terrible. Yeah, no thanks. It's like being drunk and car sick all at the same time. Yeah, without the fun parts. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Without the fun buzz uh, or whatever. <laughs> right. Anyway, speaking of a fun buzz, I am loving the Ned uh, hemp oil capsules. Oh, love I love them. I tried them for the first time the other day. Yeah. You know, the best part is you don't taste the stuff. No, There's exactly. no aftertaste well, either. You don't burp it up Courtney's like fish oil, you know, part, sometimes. Yeah. So, you, yeah, no, it's... I actually really enjoy the taste, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's game changer for Courtney because then she can just take the the pills and, and uh, you know, get the same experience. So I gave it to my mom because she can have some anxiety and stuff. Yeah. And I had her just take one mm -hmm. and she loved it. She's like, oh my God, I felt uh, kind of calm and good. And she's like, is this... Isn't your dad using it right now too? My dad's using it for pain. Yeah. So he wakes up stiff. Uh, he's got arthritis up and down his spine and, and he, what he should be doing is mobility exercise and he should also eliminate certain foods from his diet, but <laughs> baby steps, he's yeah. not going to do that. So yeah. I convinced him to take something instead. So he's doing that, but it is helping him. He says when he takes it, he wakes up and he can move better. Uh, now, the only problem with that, with my dad, at least is when he starts to feel better, he starts to do stupid shit that makes him feel worse later. So he'll he'll wake up, be like, mm. "I feel good, Sal," mm. and he'll be like, "You know what I did? I, you know, I went in the backyard and I tore up the whole lawn to do the thing." Or, you know, he'll wrestle with my brother. My brothers, you guys have seen my brother. He's massive. Yeah, yeah he's and he'd be horse. like, "Oh, I feel good. Let's see if you could take me down." I'm like, "Dad, you're like <laughs> 65 and you got arthritis <laughs> everywhere, and your son is, you know, 230 pounds a horse. Like, why would you try to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to show him I could still kick his ass, <laughs> yeah. which he can." Hey, Justin, I heard you found the, the show Succession. I did. I, you I like just that? found on HBO Max. I, I'm enjoying it. It has like a, a Billions kind of vibe to it. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's just interesting, like the power dynamic of like, you know, who's trying to run the company and all. So it's I, I didn't know that, uh, you know, it's been out for mm -hmm. as long as it has. I was going to present it to you like, hey, dude, I found this awesome show. <laughs> and of course, Adam's already on top of it. Well, so. Doug and I have been talking about that for a minute, right, Doug? You found that too. Like, yeah, we, I love we, the show. Uh, yeah, we both. You know, I didn't know, and one of you guys brought it up that uh, uh, Macaulay Culkin's brother yes. is the one yeah. of the main characters. I didn't realize that. Oh, well, he looks just like him. Oh, I know. Yeah, him. when you say after you say, it, you're like, oh god, that's totally him, right? Uh -huh. Was he in anything else before that? Like, I didn't know he was. He's even been in a few movies with his brother. Like, if you go back and look at like Home Alone, all these different things, like he's been there. 
uh, as far as I know. Didn't Rogan just recently, or in the last year, mm-hmm. interview him? They did? Yeah, did I you? listened to that one. It was, I didn't listen to it. It was he, interesting. Now, now, what's he up to? Because I always feel like he's weird. Like when Dude, you see I have no idea him. what he's up to. But he, it, I, he's actually like, I mean, he's fairly normal. Like, considering the fact that he was a child star, and most child stars are like just off the rails. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he's... I, he's dealing with it pretty well. I think that he, he probably took some time off Hollywood and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. has regained, you know, some sense of normalcy in his life. But Just left yeah. the cult or whatever. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, Basically. I tagged you guys in the Britney Spears oh my booby, God. booby pick. Did you see that? Okay, so. <laughs> Dude, so, okay. so here's the de- I, yeah. I have a theory. <laughs> yes. You did tell or a me prediction. Like, Thank you. I'll <laughs> make a prediction. Yeah. You know how she. Apparently, she escaped this thing where her dad was controlling her. Escaped. I think she, yeah, won the court case. Yeah, yeah. So I say escaped because that's what everybody was talking about. Yeah, yeah. right? so, so do you think like societal pressure had an influence on all this? Well, I think we may learn why, <laughs> why she dad was wasn't controlling uh, everything. I, I, I kind of subscribe to that You think so? Too. That would be crazy if all of a sudden Bro, like, she just blows like millions of dollars. She doesn't look very stable to me, dude. She does not. Right away. Right away. That happens. What does she do? Remember, she's a 39-year-old mother okay yeah, let her boobies right. out right away boom right away. Yeah. i won tits out yeah look at my boobs <laughs> do you think that had something to do with the court case winning i do what i think she's like hyped and she's like now nah, i can be i crazy feel like again. you would if you were being held captive in a sense right i feel like she would be doing things like that more that, so. that is kind of the symbolic liberation move right yeah. i guess that's true yeah no didn't yeah. now wasn't she should have let him all the way free if that was the case that's so. true uh, she did but it was kind of censored the nipple i'm sure there's a version online I wonder if she's gonna do an only what is it uh, an only fans oh my god <laughs> she would make a billion dollars have you guys heard, remember i brought Easily. up on the show that their only fans is moving away from like nudity and stuff yeah. uh, have, yeah. have anybody heard anything else on no. the follow up on that no, no nobody else has yeah. yeah uh I just ju- justin's very i mean adam's <laughs> very concerned about this apparently it's, 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 it's affecting like, what the hell's yeah. going on yeah, i'm just i'm just happy she's free now yeah, <laughs> someone share that clip with yeah. Brittany. Yeah, with the Bill story. Cosby meme uh, that that works. Yeah, no, I think she's I think she's kind of crazy a little bit. I mean, okay, it is strange when you see a woman that age. Nothing wrong, by the way. I think she's very attractive and looks good, but that's typically an insecure young kid that'll do that on his it does expect, it looks like a younger girl move yeah you yeah, don't expect sure. that from someone who's has kids oh, well i imagine age. you you make millions of dollars before the age of 20 you 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 kind of skip a lot of maturity that you would go through yeah, that's a good point yeah i mean i feel like that's you're she's probably in a, in a in many ways so in many ways she's probably very mature and had to mm-hmm. deal with things that people at that age didn't have to at the same time i think she's probably well, frozen in time with a lot of things too also, that she didn't have to go through. She point. got ridiculed like like unjustifiably like crazy for just like yeah. barely even kind of showing skin, you know, and like doing sexy moves and provocative stuff like when she first started out because like they, they, it was kind of crazy. Did you watch that documentary? Yeah. Yeah. It was how aggressive sad. everybody was in, in, towards her. And then so this may just be sort of like, you know, like a big F you. You know, know what? The, looking back. So during that period of time, there were like a few of these girls that were performers and they were like, okay, should I go all the way slutty? Should I go all the way? You know, uh, it was like that whole thing. Yeah. Like, right. Christina Aguilera, she went full on. Remember? She was from that Mickey yeah. Mouse Club group, uh-huh. and she went n- crazy nuts. Gigi, Gigi, Gaga. Yeah, yeah, and I... <laughs> it, yeah, but Britney paid the one. way to open the door for that, She right? did. Now, yeah. some people th- at the time, I remember people saying Christina ruined her, is going to ruin her career, and other people saying, no, she's not going to ruin her career. Looking back, she might have. She might have. Remember, Christina Aguilera had incredible voice she actually was super talented as a singer yeah and after she did that did she do a whole lot more oh i think so i, think I mean she's, still... she's on like the voice andrew and are that. you i know you're a big christina aguilera yeah, he's, fan like what i you... mean he was wearing her shirt the other day yeah so. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is up with her what is, i mean i think she still went on to do pretty pretty did big, she? yeah i think so bro i think yeah I she don't did know. things i think he had I, a good I, career i don't follow sure. i don't follow pop and and celebrities liar. i know i don't i really don't <laughs> except for britney spears that was it britney spears lily britney spears was the only like uh, famous person that like I I followed or paid attention to when I was a kid. Other than that, I just I never was into People magazine. I didn't watch. She was like E Entertainment. I, girl next door. And what's the other yeah. What's the other popular show that's like E Entertainment that everybody watches? I, I have no uh, idea. Yeah. What Ryan called. Seacrest. Anything Ryan Seacrest is on. I'm I'm changing the channel. What was that one on MTV? There was that one where they would show that the the top music videos, and there was like that one dude that oh, hosted oh, it. Carson uh, Daly. There you yeah. go. TRL. Wow. There you wow. Go. wow. Look Come at on. you with the MTV. I mean, yeah. Trivia. Yeah. 
<laughs> Come on, dude. That's like you know what's funny. Uh, and I I was actually watching another show on, on HBO Max that was like kind of covering the whole Woodstock, the 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 one that happened like in the nineties. That was so funny, by the way. Oh, dude. they tried to recreate Woodstock. Yeah, and it was the opposite. It was the opposite. Well, look at the list of bands that they brought. It was so stupid. Like it, none of them were in there. Like you know, peace, love, and uh, uh, you know, free love. So it, it was like all aggressive, like heavy metal and and rap. You know, mixed, did you like, watch that documentary? And, I was going to watch it the other yeah, night. Yeah, so was it good? I couldn't. I didn't finish all the way through because it made me kind of uncomfortable. Uh, just because it's just you could you could just sense this this energy and vibe like of the people that were there like how bad it was gonna uh erupt in their face dude there, uh, was, there was violence there were like uh, you know people getting sexually assaulted yeah. it was so so, so opposite of so the why one. i bring that up is because the whole trl thing so you remember like carson daly and then there was like another guy dave whatever his name is um the but, chubby white dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, like, Carson Daly goes to like address this huge sea of of people, and just like, hey, like, like doing his whole TRL thing. Everybody's booing, throwing shit at him. <laughs> oh, you know, no. like he's like, ah, oh, he's just getting pelted, right? And apparently, there was this whole uh, like everybody was upset because that was like. MTV used to just show bands that were kind of on the up and coming. And a lot of them were rock based or like, you know, art alternative. And it was like a lot more, you know, in that kind of genre. And then they started incorporating the, these teeny bopper, like the Britney Spears, the Backstreet Boys. Wow. Like they just started kind of smashing that in there with all this like bubblegum pop shit. <laughs> and so all these like angry dudes and people there are just oh, like, yeah. you fucking bro. Like yelling at him that like they ruined their MTV and all this <laughs> and like pelting him with like rocks. I was like, wow, yeah, dude. That was on that was on HBO Max, right? Is that yeah. what that was on? Uh, yeah. you guys see the, the article I shared that um I didn't even realize that AT and I didn't know AT how silly, right? I didn't know AT and T owned HBO Max. I didn't real uh, they do? Know? Yeah, they I do. Know, I know that. Yeah, the article I shared was just that they they crushed their their last quarterly because they came in uh their subscribers that uh had the increase of it on HBO Max is like 43 million subscribers. Do you know I think Meanwhile, I Netflix lost. Did you see Netflix yeah. lost like so half a million? That's what I was going to ask Doug. Oh, no. I think maybe more. I thought they were they were they're were approaching like a billion mm -hmm. users or something crazy. Do you know what Netflix subscriber base is? It's I know it's ridiculously high. I don't, but I, let you, me look it up. Gonna go on I, I, I know I, they lost five. Well, I, I want to watch this. Thousand. We've been talking about this since the beginning of all this stuff going on, right? So right. I really wanted the to streaming watch. Wars. Yeah, see who who comes out on top, and as as you start to see these other ones rise, you know what I'm starting to question too is my original breaking free of the cable was to save money right more choices yeah. for yeah. but i'm starting to add up all the streaming services that i have <laughs> it's my, very uh, equal yeah, these yeah days. i might be up to or maybe over what my cable was before what, no if what's you, it at oh 207 it's not that much higher wow no, and they lost i want to say five hundred thousand people and their their shares dropped in price, Netflix lost uh, quite a bit. Maybe you can look that up too. Doug. Now, did you read an article that it, they attributed it to something, or is it just because the competition? Well, politically speaking, the they're saying, oh, they you know oh, all the woke read... programming got. Oh them. god, you must have been reading like a Babylon or some shit I don't, like that. I, I don't or... remember, but <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but reality is the likelihood is that it's just competitive. Yeah. It's a much more competitive. Yeah. Netflix was the only show in town for. A yeah, while. no, and uh, honestly, I, I think that these other ones are doing a better job. I just I I I find the quality quality of documentaries and shows that HBO puts out, although they can't hang with Netflix as yeah. far as the amount of content, but I think the content's better. I think they get better actors. Mm -hmm. I think they have better story plots. Mm -hmm. they, I, the stuff that, I, that HBO Max has, I like better than but most. But they don't of. have as much. Right? Oh, not even close. Yeah. I think Netflix crushes them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was right. Almost half a, half a million. Um, and that was in, a, in the second quarter. Yeah, I'm excited for, oh, wow. uh, of course, I don't remember the title of this uh, show coming up, but Apple has like put a ton of money uh, into this like ultimate epic science fiction um, yes the series <laughs> yeah nice. if you you look it up <laughs> Doug I, I don't remember the actual title of it but like it's 
apparently a lot of inspiration for some of the biggest you know science fiction franchises out there came from this foundation foundation yes oh what is that about uh, so yeah again it's it's just this like really expansive universe that that this author had created and so yeah they put a lot of money in like so this is like their see your game of thrones kind of hedge uh yeah. uh that they're going to be promoting soon but yeah because apple's been somewhat you know, hit or mess with me. Like they, they obviously they they try really hard to make quality shows, which mm-hmm. I appreciate. But um, they're like so. The one was was that newsroom one. Love I love that morning that was, show. Yeah, the morning show yeah. that they did really well with that. But they haven't really had like uh, many hits since. So Doug has the trailer up. The imagery looks amazing uh, for Foundations. You know, okay, so here's what sci-fi... Oh, I'm so excited about it. Well, here's what sci-fi does sometimes what they what they do that fucks it, that they fuck things up. Is they spend, and I'm not saying this is what's happening here because this is a trailer. There's no way for us to know. Is that Matthew McConaughey? It look, it looked like um, that wasn't him. No, I don't no, think it's so. Not. I don't oh. think they have big. Yeah. So where sci-fi sometimes messes up is they focus so much on the imagery mm. and how cool things look, and then they don't spend either time or energy. That's, that's the Avatar effect on the story, <laughs> right? And so the story sucks, but yeah. you got all this cool imagery. Yeah, I hate it. When, uh, when you know when they do that, uh, yeah, agreed. No, this yeah. apparently this is a really rich, deep story. Really, so, yeah. It's now, it, now series or is it a movie? St- I think it's series. It's a series, oh, it's a big, okay. expansive series. Now, yeah. the, back to your comment about saving money, spending up, spending more money. Mm. I've heard people say that, like, oh, you know, this was supposed to save us money, but now it's costing us more money. You're not comparing. People don't compare apples to apples. If you compare the choices that you had before, the quality that you had before to what you could get for the same price now or less, it is much cheaper. The difference is we have so much more available that we end up just getting more stuff. So, I mean, if you go through your, your all the channels yeah, you belong no, to. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't do, I, I, I'm saying it more ironically or tongue in cheek, well, yeah. right? I mean, I, it's like, that was the the main driver for me to switch over. I was like, man, I'm paying 250 a month for my cable bill. This yeah. is crazy. I only watch a handful of shows. So what ends up happening, I cancel it. Then I start with just like Sling Studio and HBO, maybe like two, ESPN, maybe three or four, and I'm spending, you know, 60 or $70. But then like, oh, then Prime comes out and then, oh, yeah. Netflix. And then, and then before you know it, they I've- They get you. Yeah, but, I've collected but, but all. Also, you got to appreciate the fact that you can cancel out and like you know it used to be such a pain because everything is bundled you know yeah. through yeah. Uh, cable so at least like if you want to be more uh, uh, you, you know if you want to like make sure you're not spending too much money I, do you, you know do you know that Apple has this, an awesome feature uh, had my brother-in-law who always my, my tech nerdy brother-in-law always saves me when I get in pickles like this so uh, I, I brought up on the show like a long time ago how, you know, Katrina every like, I don't know, I'd say every quarter, every six months, she goes in my my phone and my bills and she goes through and cancels things that I've been paying $7 or $30 a month for for however long and not using uh, using the service. Anything that you've linked to your Apple Pay or your card to Apple and you use to do that, there is a place where you can go. It has all of my subscriptions. Easy. That is, you yes. Show me that. And you just yeah. turn it off. Yeah. So much easier. Oh, that's great. Because you know what a pain in the ass sometimes that is to cancel something that you've subscribed to and you can't figure out where is the unsubscribe button on their website or how do I how do I stop this from yeah. it's not that easy. Oh wow. So there's a there's actually a, a, a part in your in your iPhone that's like a set in, in the settings where you just go over and it shows all of your subscriptions that you're you're paying for. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. the future of streaming at some point it's gonna take a while to get here, but at some point is gonna be you just buy shows. That's it. There's not going to be you have to sign up for a network. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that already. So there's like uh, Apple's like that, Prime is like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you have your you get your all your free. I think it'll stay like that, where you have a bunch of free content, which makes sense because that's going to bring everybody in. And then yeah, they, but don't you have to subscribe still and pay a, a fee? Well, yeah, to like Prime or whatever. That's well, what no, I mean. If you have Prime, you get all their movie stuff for free. Right, but what I mean is, I think you're not going to have to pay any subscription. I think you're going to be you're just going to be able to shop. And pay individual well, it's episodes. Kinda, if okay. that's, yeah, if that's the case too, you'd think that like they'd allow the very first episode to be free, and then everything else. So that way you get hooked. Eventually. So they do. They, so yeah, I've seen Epics that, but... does that. There's still, what you're saying is already happening. Uh, you're not paying for Prime movies. You're paying for Prime the service to mail to your house. That's what you're paying for, yeah, I know and then that. they give you free access to a bunch of movies. And then if you want to buy other upgraded. 
you pay all the car. Yeah, no, I'm, I know that. And Prime is a, is a not a good example necessarily because Prime Amazon offers way lot lots of other things that have nothing to do with streaming, like you said, like the yeah. free shipping, which I think is super valuable. I'm saying just streaming. Period. I think the few as it becomes more and more and more and more competitive, eventually the the winning model is going to be you don't pay nothing for any subscription. You just go on and pay well, ninety nine so cents. I think what will happen is that it, as it gets more and more competitive, like we see is happening right now, is Netflix will probably have to move to a model that's like, so they're also building their original content. It's like what supplement shops do, right? So they'll make their yeah. most money off of their content. Mm -hmm. So they'll get you in for free or for like a next to nothing type of price. Yeah, there's no licensing fee, no nothing. Yeah, get you in, right, to come watch their streaming. And then they'll have all their originals that yeah. they can, three ninety nine, four ninety nine, and upsell you to. Like that's a, yeah. I think that's a, Interesting. Yeah, an yeah. interesting theory that that might go that way. All right, you want to hear something really uh, cool, really interesting? Yeah, because I got some too. So two studies, <laughs> two studies on resistance training came out. So one came out that compared resistance training, strength training, right, to cardio and then to nothing. And it's another study that shows that resistance training is superior for fat loss. It was a head-to-head -head competition. You burn more body fat with resistance training. They had obviously a positive effect on their metabolism. And long term, it was just much more effective. We talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. Then there was another study. This is an interesting one now. So there's a compound, and this is very complex. And to be quite honest with you, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a compound in muscle that prevents uh, hypertrophy. In other words, it's kind of there. It's not myostatin or anything like that, but it's in the muscle. And what it does is it, is it prevents muscle from growing. When you lift weights, this compound, what they found in the study, leaves the muscle. So now the muscle is free to grow because you've sent that muscle building signal. Guess where it goes? Mm. Fat cells. Wow. This compound goes to fat cells and it makes the fat cells want to burn and release fat or prevent what? or slow down fat accumulation. Oh, this, would, this would promote Wait our theory where we talk about how building muscle doesn't speed up your metabolism as much where people try and argue that. Right, like, but there's other effects. Exactly. This was a New York Times article. Wow. And uh, I don't remember the, the, the term, the, the, what it was called, but it was an animal study. And this is the first time they observed this. And they said that resistance training, strength training, primes your body to burn body fat. Literally by changing... Aside from the fact that muscle tissue is more expensive, needs more calories, yes. that's only one yes. component to it. Yes. It's also sending a compound over to fat cells, which encourage the fat cells to be utilized so as energy. it's a compound. So, is it, I mean, this is a chemical that you produce that kind of... I can't remember what they call like it. Part of a hormone mechanism? Like no, I can't remember what they call it. I'm not sure if it's part of a gene. Uh, I think they- Like it gets expressed Vesicles by... is one of the terms that they use for how this thing travels through the body. Right. But they found them accumulate in fat cells from the resistance training. Like it left the muscle. So it's like your muscle is signaling or your body's using the muscle to signal to fat. And it says burn, which is- uh, remarkable. Well, you know, right. I, well, now you just think about all the scientists that are going to try and figure out how to like artificially correct. reproduce that. Correct. Well, I'm more interested in pointing out this was something that we've been touting for quite some time. That's that right. That academia used to. We, I remember when I first said this on the show, like I don't know, four years ago or whatever like that. Right. I, and I got just hammered. Yeah. By it, all the, the cal it's not ten calories per pound or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then everybody started started arguing over semantics that it's not that. And the point that I was making was that it's what it does for the body as far as speeding the metabolism is much more than what I think that we know right now. And so this just proves that, that there's much more going on it than does, just yeah. the tissue is more That's expensive really and needs and more calories. And speaking of which, uh, predictions and whatever, uh, you know, I, we've been saying, and I've been really making the case that we are entering soon, we're entering into a stage where resistance training and strength training is finally going to get the credit that it deserves. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from studies and the medical field. That's going to drive it. And we are now, that's exactly what's happening. We are now seeing medical journals and doctors and weight loss, quote unquote, experts start to say, oh, this is the best way to burn body fat. It's to lift weights. And this mm -hmm. is just one more study that shows, you know, kind of what's happening. The metabolism is extremely complex. It's the second most complex thing that we've identified besides the human brain. And we know through experience that when you lift weights, there's this incredible fat burning effect that comes from it that you can't calculate from the calories burned while mm -hmm. doing the exercise or even the per pound of, you know, of muscle and how many calories that burns. There's other stuff that's going on. And this is one of the first studies to wow. show that there's some 
maybe some gene effects or again, yeah, I don't remember more, what the term was. More proof there. What it's did you have for coming. us, Justin? Yeah, so I was actually going to go in a paranormal kind of direction here. Um, <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess there's been this weird phenomenon. I Every now and then I check out that website uh, next door because, uh, well, Courtney gets, gets obsessed with it because it's just kind of fun to watch, you know, what people are talking about and obsessing over and stuff. So apparently there's just been this trend lately um, that um, owners, dogs have been acting very strange. Um, and it started out with this one thread of, of this couple that was like, yeah, uh, we were just sitting and watching TV and all of a sudden our dogs just, all of a sudden out of nowhere just ran to the corner of the house and started barking and you know like and there's nothing there and it freaked us out and we were like trying to figure out and then all of a sudden all these other people started piling on and they're like yeah all of a sudden you know just out of the blue like a dog woke up out of its sleep got up and started barking you know just randomly in the air uh, and, and so, you know, like some people are like, oh my God, <laughs> we've got like ghosts, like what's happening to this? <laughs> and so then it became like, well, maybe uh, actually if you go back uh, to the 89 earthquake, there was like a lot of this kind of behavior beforehand with dogs because they could sense, you know, these vibrations or this movement of, you know, the plates mm -hmm. and all that kind of That's stuff. That's weird because dogs never bark for no reason. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's so uncommon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I get that too. Like it could yeah. just be a random occurrence. But No way. Uh, Their senses are crazy. But dude, dude, but, but wouldn't like, the earthquake follow like, shortly? Like, like un, it, it wasn't like um, regular behavior. So you know when your dog's just out like barking at some like critter outside or yeah. whatever. It's pretty like predictable or they like actually go to look you know for but, but they're just like barking randomly at like a wall yeah well there was a, there was a case like that i remember where it was where do the dogs in this particular town were all freaking out all the time they couldn't figure out what was going on and apparently there was this factory across the river mm -hmm. that was emitting this sound that normal people couldn't hear obviously because dogs have incredibly sensitive hearing okay but the dogs could hear and it took them a while to figure it out and they could not figure out yes. why the dogs were freaking out so yeah yeah that's totally something that's plausible and also too like somebody theorized that um you know some of those rat traps that are like electric um sets dogs off because it's like they can hear that uh that that, that emitting like electrical sound mm -hmm. and it like freaks them out i've so. always been fascinated with the dog's senses man the ability for them like i'll have somebody walk on the street and we're, you know we have a good sized house we could be on the complete opposite hanging out watching tv mozzie could be sleeping and all of a sudden his head pops up and Rrr. yeah and you're like, what the hell? And then I go walk over the front door and you can see someone walking. Past. It's another world. Dude, they live in another world. It's crazy. Do, do you guys remember that anti pot commercial? Because I'm in the 90s. I had a lot of these. <laughs> the drive through with the uh, the dog that talking. He, he talks to the dog. Yeah. Or the, the, yeah. I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, the dog. Exactly, dude. Hey, those commercials didn't work. If anything, it made you want to try weed. Yeah, yeah. you're like, well, you could talk to dogs <laughs> on weed. <laughs> this yeah. is amazing. I'm rolling a joint today. Yeah. Yeah. Or the one where the, the one where the girl, like, She's like, she turned into like, she's like melted into the couch, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I, I remember watching that going, what does that feel like? I might, maybe oh, I'll try woo. this out. Like, <laughs> I know, your just, commercials did not yeah, work, dude. Terrible just, propaganda. Just try yeah. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying this show. Real quick. We have a sponsor called Olipop. They make sodas. No joke. These are sodas, like the ones you enjoyed as a kid, that are extremely low calorie, that are also good for gut health. I'm not making this up. They contain prebiotic fibers. It's not artificially sweetened, although they do taste very sweet. And they're low calories, like 30 calories or something like that per can. This stuff is amazing. I have gut issues. I drink this and I feel much better. Go check them out. And of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get an amazing discount. Head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 15% off. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Elfers215. Can heavy caffeine intake make it more difficult to drop body fat? Oh, actually, that's... And they put six to eight cups. Yeah, mm. that's, that's actually a pretty good question. I mean, because... look at me. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, uh, the, the whole cortisol thing, right? We talk about cortisol junkies. Yeah, we... well, the studies show that caffeine um, has a positive effect. In other words, it helps burn body fat, could help suppress appetite, give people energy, burn more calories. 
in but terms the, of kinesthetic movement. Yeah, but pro the problem with that is that there are there's definitely a subset of the population that doesn't do well with caffeine, and if you abuse caffeine, it definitely induces this kind of stress state in the body, which can probably make you overeat uh, or make you not move as much. I know if I have too much caffeine, I get this paradoxical effect where my energy is not higher; it's actually lower, and I feel more. Well, isn't like, to Justin's point? Isn't the research that supports the the um, benefits of caffeine in regards to the movement. It's not necessarily like caffeine goes in your system and helps speed your metabolism up or burn body fat. It's that when you're on caffeine, you, you for the most part, should have more, more energy, fidgety, more activity. Like that's, overall activity increase. That's got to be most of it. I mean, studies yeah. will show that it improves insulin sensitivity or at least coffee in particular. Mm -hmm. But you know, here's the thing with caffeine. Does it improve your health or does it take away from your health because I've worked with lots of clients who were had this kind of HPA access dysfunction back mm. then they used to call it adrenal fatigue overstressed overworked uh, hormone imbalances and caffeine was not good for them in fact taking caffeine away after they adjusted improved their ability to burn body fat and build muscle yeah so it's one of those things it's got to be the right dose and, and for the right person. Too much is bad. Uh, it, it'll it'll make everything much worse. Yeah, I mean, if it's taken away from your recovery, if it's if it's hindering your the quality of your sleep, you know, the, all these things you have to kind of factor out uh, because those do contribute massively towards your goal of of losing fat. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a massive individual variance here. Huge. I, I my personal. So when I start to feel, um, to your point, Sal, when I, there's there comes a point when I've been increasing my my caffeine intake over time that all of a sudden I get to this place where I'll have the fourth or fifth cup of coffee or rock star or energy drink. And I actually get tired almost yeah. right afterwards. Like it gives me like initial little bit of a spark. And then 30 minutes later, I'm just like groggy. And There's I feel a sweet spot. If you teeter over, yeah, yeah. I have the same. Ex and so exact I know that as I, as I start to slowly, right. Cause I always go by all the way back down to like my, like my baseline for me is one cup of coffee in the morning when I start my day. It's kind of like mm -hmm. how I reset, right? So I'll go. I like that. Just, just I like waking up to that. Once I start to scale up to beyond that, and I start to feel those adverse effects, where either one, I get tired and I dip early in the day because almost I've had too much, or if I start to see it start to affect my sleep, which both those start to and for me that starts to happen, which is whatever the amount of caffeine is in. Uh, a rock star and two cups of coffee is kind of my threshold. Once I peak over that, You're probably around five or six hundred milligrams. I uh, that, well, I mean, the rock star is two twenty. Coffee is probably a hundred, right, or eighty each. Mm, or something depends like that. how big the coffee. Yeah, is. It's just a normal cup of coffee. Okay. It's not like a Starbucks venti. I'm talking about. See, talking I take about caffeine in typically capsule form, so it's measured. And I know for me, it's about three hundred to four hundred max. And if I work it up, work up to that, you know. The funny thing about caffeine is it's the most widely used uh, and I would say abused drug in the world. It's mm -hmm. super acceptable, but it's a classic drug. Classic. You build up a tolerance. It's got very bad withdrawal. Very Just like addictive. Going, oh, very addictive. Go off. Anybody who drinks coffee or has caffeine on a regular basis, stop cold turkey and then experience some of the worst withdrawal you'll ever experience in your life. I've, I've gone off cannabis cold turkey and it wasn't as bad as going off of uh, caffeine. So it's just one of those things, but it's the right dose. I know for me, the right amount of caffeine, for example, will give me a better workout. Too much makes my workout way worse, way now, worse. I think the point of this question is that, is caffeine have a, a, a mechanism that directly affects fat storage, which I don't think that's true. But I do think that to our point, you can get to a place where you're having so much of it that it then begins to affect energy levels, which then can affect workout potentially yeah. Yeah. and or sleep. And if you start messing with sleep, then yes, that will affect recovery, yeah. building right. muscle and those things. There's a cause but, and effect. But there's that. not like a, oh, once you hit over 400 milligrams of caffeine, you now start to store more body fat or something like that. No, that's not how this works. But each person probably has a threshold to where you start to see some side effects that could negatively affect you in your pursuit of fat loss or building muscle. Yeah, because the thing is, uh, it's a central nervous system stimulant, so theoretically it makes you burn more calories. But when you really look at the, you, you, you look at, uh, just look around, look how many people have caffeine and how many people are obese. It doesn't make up for extra calories. It doesn't make up for eating poorly or not exercising. And again, I'm going to make this, I can't stress this enough. If caffeine is is causing your health to decline, if it's reducing your ability to thrive, if it's causing stress effects in the body, 
then it's going to hurt your ability to build muscle or burn body fat because when you're unhealthy, you're just your hormones are off, you're not getting as good as sleep, you don't feel as good. And in that state of being, it's, you're not going to be as effective. I just think it's a good habit for you, everybody. If, even if you love caffeine and you don't think there's any negative effects from it, it's just a good habit to bring yourself down uh, every once in a while. You mm -hmm. know, every three or four months or six months, if you know you've been consistently having X amount and you, that X amount continues to grow, uh, that it's probably smart. And, uh, I mean, for the, the least, it, it'll be cheaper for you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you go, if you get to a place where, like I said, where I have a rock star, two coffees, you know, that's basically three, six, you know, $10 of caffeine that I'm taking in a day, completely going back all the way to the direction, then it only cost me the two, three dollars for a cup of coffee to get the same effect. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think for financial reasons, it's smart to do it. And then also for the addictive properties that come with it. Next question is from Mo Strength Gains. You've ranked the big lifts a few times. What would you consider the top five accessory movements outside of a squat or deadlift variation, overhead press, and bench press? Uh, okay. I, I would have to put a row in there. I think a barbell row. Okay, I'll give you or that. Or a dumbbell row. I'll give you that. So there's is, one. Is a very, very important exercise. Okay. I'll, I'll do one more and I'll leave the, this one. I think you guys will probably guess too. Split stance, uh, squat variations. Uh, well, that, I mean, that's a, a squat variation. Though. Yeah. Um, right? I mean, that's a, that's a, Bulgar a Bulgarian split squat is a right. squat squat variation. Yeah, but Would you see a lunge is a part of a that's, squat variation? That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, because I, I, I would go that direction, too. I think we too. could put lunge because you have that back leg. It's stabilizing differently. I think it's a different, different exercise. Yeah, yeah I would say that lunging or Bulgarian or mm -hmm. backstep lunge or something like that has got to be up there. So there's two right there. So what do you guys think for the other... Yeah, the three. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would think like a pull-up. You don't see that well, on there. That's not, that's not bad. pull-up would definitely cover I, I'll give good. you that. Yeah, I that's like, not a bad I like, one. I like pull-up for sure exercise. there. You know what's hard about this is that a lot of accessory movements are, are very similar as far as how I would value them, right? Mm, you have like the yeah. big core lifts like yeah. that are – that we talk about so much and we rank and we say are so valuable. And then I kind of feel like all the rest of them are like very debatable on like, Oh, yeah. would you put this one above sure, that one or right. this one? Like the, I, it's hard for me to list what I yeah. think is the next. Just preferably I, I would also throw in like a farmer carries just because of like the overall value of what that brings, like in terms of like loading of weight, but also like it, it reinforcing good posture. And like, I could pretty much like, I could see that plug and play that in a lot of different types of I, programs. I could see that. I would even put a dip. Um, you know, using your body weight to press yourself up or yeah. to push your body up, just like a pull up to pull your body up. Very functional. I mean, I'll give I'll give body. a dip. I love dip because it, we already did two pulls, right? So we did the the row and then and the, the pull up. Pull up. Right. So I can get down with that. I love the dip for your push. Yeah. Because I was trying to think of other push exercises that's not a variation of the overhead press or the bench or the press. Bench press right? Yeah, I was thinking of the, the uh, farmer carry for the deadlift, you know, like in terms of just holding or just stabilization. Stabilizing, yeah. Uh, yeah. Overhead carries, then maybe? I'm trying to think of something that uh, would be. Uh, a that's ver very valuable. Yeah. That's another um, valuable exercise. So we got the dip, we have the row, we have the pull up, we have farmer uh, carry. Farmer carry. And overhead carries? Overhead carries are pretty are pretty good. What about like chopping, like rotational stuff? Uh, you know, in terms of like like a med ball toss or something like. A, I mean, it's again, this is an accessory that's uh, it's not easily uh, programmed. Well, you know, well, while we're over here fumbling all rotation. over ourselves right now, I yeah. want to point out that this is the that's the point, right? That those those top ranked exercises themselves somebody can get in the most amazing shape and never move outside of them and the best thing you can do after you move outside of them is all the variations of those movements yeah, yeah. and then we can get into this debate of all I these know. other secondary movements or accessory movements that are are great those are and i'm not saying these are all bad exercises i'm just saying that when you compare them to the big 5 uh, there's so many variations within the big five. Well, that's that I like think are the incredible. common subsect is is what you do is you you find like the uh, you know the other versions of the squats, the other versions of the deadlifts, you know, like the to to implement in the programming as far as like your second tier uh, while putting it together. After that, it's like okay, so now what are we actually trying to do to add, to adapt towards? I mean, would a chest fly be in here? You know what? I'll I'll say this. 
Let's imagine this is a step up. So, so ima imagine see. this is a routine, right? You're designing a workout plan for someone. Yeah. And we have to pick an exercise for the each major muscle well, now, group. We we did, I mean, pull up, dip, row, you know, uh, farmer carry. Like, why not put something like a, a, a Turkish get up? Like, that would round this whole thing out and include a very functional stabilization component, some core. Oh, I was like, thinking of, okay, what would I do if I was going to use the, the next best accessory movements and I want to attack the entire body? Like, I right. want to hit a ch chest exercise, shoulder, arms, back, legs, but I can't use the five big. What yeah, am I- the four big, right? Or the, yeah, four yeah. or five in this case, they use five. What which, what would I do? And I, I the dip- can argue you can argue is your chest mm. right right um, chest shoulders and up, triceps. yeah back yeah, back pull up, biceps and rows back biceps. Yep. that that goes there legs we're gonna say what you're gonna say I say step ups and lunges yeah, lunges Personally. squats we're already there right so lunges uh, give you that other component okay uh so let's see we don't have like a like a functional stabilization type component I mean farmer carries are really good. Uh, for that, yeah. you know, what would be good. I mean, I think I think that the next one, the next one we can add is debatable, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to see the comments after this video because I know Andrew, you know, puts these videos together. I'd like to see in the comments what people think that ex that next exercise should be. Yeah, there's really not a wrong answer here, and, and I think I can argue uh, almost any other yeah. accessory movement. Let's but. see what you guys think. Next question is from Brother Louis 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 eighty seven. Can I still build muscle and lose fat even if I walk 25,000 steps a day? I work out three to four times a week and do intermittent fasting every day. I am also at a caloric deficit every day. What is your advice to do body recomposition successfully given my situation? Let's forget all the information he gave us because uh, then we'd have to design a routine and ask him more questions. Here's the real question. Can you lose fat and build muscle at the same time? Typically, you it's very challenging, especially if you're intermediate or advanced. Like if you're really advanced, you've been working out for a while, you've been eating pretty good for a while, and then you decide to go on a cut, and you're like, I'm going to build while I cut. Like, good luck. Like, this is a very challenging thing to do. Probably not. What do we call that? Like the Goldilocks zone? Yeah. yeah. If you're a beginner, this happens all the time. Uh, every single I, new client I train gained muscle and burn body there, fat in the There first is few an months. exception to that. The advanced or intermediate person who's been off on a layoff, right? So when I, if I've been off for a few weeks. Well, yeah, that, that I would put that in the same category. They're deconditioned. Well, yeah. So that's important though to, to note that because someone who's thinking that they're, they, they've been training for a long time, just mm -hmm. they, now they think, oh, there's no chance of me doing this. This happens to me every time I go back to my training, right? So, and the way I do it is I actually don't focus on losing. I focus on building. I try and eat a maintenance caloric intake and I go back to building. And you let and the it, metabolism do the And job. I let the metabolism do the work. I figure, okay, this is my body needs, let's say uh, hypothetically, maintenance is 3,000 calories. Um, I'm back to training for strength and trying to build. I'm going to eat till I'm satisfied, say 3,000 calories. And inevitably what kinds of what happens in those first couple of weeks is my body starts to remember where uh, that I had muscle. It starts to put the muscle back on. And then my metabolism starts to inevitably yeah. speed up, which ends up reducing my body fat percentage. Yeah. So it, aside from the muscle memory effects, if you're consistent, 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 yes. you're advanced, your best bet is to preserve muscle. So now, how do you best preserve muscle? That's a good question. You try to build it. Mm. The goal is always to try to build muscle because <laughs> if you're trying to build muscle and you're doing it right, you're more likely to preserve muscle uh, than if you if you weren't. But in a calorie deficit, it's very difficult in a calorie deficit, oh, yeah. especially if you're advanced, to build and, and, and while losing body fat. Beginners, like I said, Every client I trained as a beginner, the first few months, that's exactly what we saw. those newbie gains. Yeah. yeah, I would see them gain muscle and burn body fat, and it happened all the time. I do think the, the advice to this person, though, is to get out of the, the deficit. So if, you're gonna, if your goal is to mm -hmm. try and to build muscle and you want to lean out also, uh, being in a caloric deficit uh, and moving that much and training that much is not mm -hmm. advantageous. Like It's going to be really tough yeah. for that, this person to build muscle right here they're more likely to, to break down. You're, that's true. Now, yeah. are you guys familiar with, this is an old, it's a famous study done in the 19, I want to say the 1970s, maybe late 70s, uh, with Casey Viator and Arthur Jones called the Colorado Experiment. Uh, I might have brought this up a long time ago. We've talked about this before a long time So ago. Arthur Jones is the inventor of Nautilus equipment. Casey Viator, the, the youngest Mr. America, back then Mr. America was a big bodybuilding contest ever. I think he won, he was 18. This genetic phenom bodybuilder, right? Really strong, long muscle bellies, the whole deal. 
he, uh, Arthur Jones, enlisted Casey Viator in his experiment. And the experiment was to test, you know, one set to failure training on Nautilus equipment. Really what Arthur Jones was trying to do was trying to sell Nautilus equipment. And he took, and, this, and there were people there witnessing this, and there was an actual study. And you got to see this. Maybe Doug can look this up. Look up the Colorado experiment, uh, Casey Viator, or just Colorado experiment before and after. Casey Vider goes in there and he does this like insane one set to failure for an exercise with forced reps and super set, like really, really crazy stuff. He ended up gaining like 30 pounds of muscle while losing 15 pounds of fat or something crazy like that in like 60 days or something insane like that. And it was documented and it was real. And people bring that up all the time and say, oh, it's totally, po look at that. Now, how long a period of time was that with the before and after there, Doug? It was a very short period of time. 28 days. 28 days he did that. He gained how much muscle and lost how much fat? 63.21 pounds of muscle mass gain, according to this. What? what? Yeah. Now, this was documented. Now, here's what a lot of people don't know. because horse steroids? He, well, well, here's what happened. Casey Viator is already a pro bodybuilder in that before picture. He had stopped training and probably, it's speculated, went off anabolics. So he had muscle memory yeah, uh, to use. Plus he went on some, whatever they used back in those days, you know, D-ball deck or whatever. Then he enrolls in this thing. So he's got like crazy muscle memory. Steroids, well, and this is the then, point I was trying to make, right? So he would be yes. considered an advanced lifter. That's why I brought this up. Yeah, an advanced lifter who is taking off. And I, I noticed this when I just take a couple weeks off. So you don't even have to be off for a very long time. I right away notice when I've been off for a few weeks or a month or two of training consistently, and or that, even just being inconsistent with my volume. My volume's significantly low. I'm sporadically training. And just getting back up to my my normal volume of training and back to eating correctly and getting enough protein and taking calories like I should. And you get that transfer. Yeah, I get that nice little build a little bit of muscle, burn a little bit of body fat. So it is possible for that. But you, what you're saying is so true is that if you're somebody who's asking this question and you haven't missed a workout in two years and you're training you know, three to five days a week and you've scaled mm -hmm. and progressively overloaded multiple different ways, yeah, really hard for that person to continue to build muscle and burn body fat. Yep. Most they, They've gotten most of those benefits already. Next question is from Tones Verone. What are ways to mentally deal with the forever moving goalposts of your fitness goals and journey? Uh, no, I, I like this. This is a good, by the way, this is a, a, a transitory period that you get into when you're stuck, when you do fitness consistently long enough, right? At first, you're very motivated by the building more, burning more, stronger, improved performance. At some point, you can't possibly keep improving. At some point, you'll hit a limit, right? If there were no limits, I mean, by this point, I should be able to, you know, deadlift, you know, 8,000 pounds, right? Mm. There's always going to be limits. How do you keep yourself motivated when I'm not going to build that much more muscle? I'm not going to gain that much more strength. I'm not going to burn more body fat. You have to learn to enjoy the workout for the sake of the workout itself. You have to enjoy the process and, the, and, and being present. It's like the man who enjoys walking is going to walk much further than the, than the man who's walking to get to a particular point like if you just enjoy walking yeah. you'll never stop it's the destination right? yes at some point the journey i should say at, yeah at some point you have to just love doing it just for the sake of doing it and that'll keep you consistent i also forever. think the the, the the answer or the strategy to this is to change the walk yeah. instead of all change the goal you know, I, I think we're, we're always so caught up in the, this, the aesthetics, right? What do I look like, right? Or how strong am I? It's like, mm -hmm. man, there's so many neat fitness goals, health goals uh, that you can pursue. And I mean, this at least- You do this, this all the time. There's, there's a whole this, multitude yeah. of them out This there. is what, I, I mean, I, I have I found this uh, early on and I love to do this. I And I switch, in fact, if anything, I have a habit of like, oh, a new goal and I do it for a while and I'm like, oh, I'm already ready for a new goal. And I change, change it a lot instead of like probably sticking with something long enough. But that's also what keeps me interested mm -hmm. is I might go on a kick, let's say for- three months and I want to get as good as Justin or as close as I can get as good as him as swinging a mace bell. And that in itself, there is a lot that goes into that. It's not simply just watching him swing it and then going and doing it every single workout. There's a lot of work I have to put into yeah. to be able to get to that ability to do that. And that's a simple goal. Or I want to watch my Turkish get up go from 40 pounds to 100 pounds. Or I do. I, now I want to build all this muscle. Or I want to get faster. Or I want to build stamina. Like 
I just think that it's, and I think all of that is great. It's are all great pursuits. And so instead of always getting focused on how strong are you or what do you look like, try, try changing the journey, try changing the path, try, instead of always moving the goalpost further away, try going for a whole different goal. Change I goalpost. totally agree. That was the, the direction I was going to go. It's just like, dude, there's just so many different, um, you know, modalities out there. There's so many different types of skills that you can acquire, you know, along this journey. It's not just build muscle, burn fat. I know that's what draws people in and that's what's the most popular. And this is what I used to struggle with so much, uh, you know, as a trainer, because I, I'm trying to voice that there's so many other pursuits within this, um, you know, th this industry uh, that could benefit you on so many different levels, like just oh, the overall quality uh, and articulation of your joints Joints, the joint health, yeah. like mobility, uh, learning something like yoga in order to then provide peace and calm and meditation in your life that you're probably lacking uh, by pursuing these goals so aggressively for so long, you know, maybe doing completely the opposite of what you've been doing is going to benefit. So you're not going to know that until you really start step into that realm oh and what's awesome and at least what's happened for me is every time i pursue one of these new goals i learn something new about myself or i learn something new about training that way that ends up carrying and benefiting something somewhere else for example yeah uh, the pursuit of the deadlift thing for me, like getting really strong the deadlift, was purely out of like competition with Sal. It's like, oh, we just started hanging out around that time. These guys were strong in the squat and deadlift. I never even once focused. That was never a goal of mine. Like, okay, I'm going to make it a goal. How how strong could I get in the deadlift? While I did it, I had this crazy side effect. I built the best back that I've, I've ever had. That wasn't even the goal. Yeah. The goal was just to catch Sal in the deadlift. Now, along the way, I got this great side effect. Same thing happened when I won the mobility kick. Mm -hmm. I was so frustrated that I had this chronic low back pain and that I couldn't break 90 degrees without my heels coming off and I and I lacked the ankle mobility and the hip mobility and I remember Dr. Brink breaking me down and I was like man I didn't realize how much I suck and I was like I want to get really good at this what ended up happening as a side effect I ended up getting this incredibly deep squat I can now squat less weight and I have the same or better development in my legs than what I had when I was squatting significantly more than that yeah. so when you start pursuing these different goals a lot of times you start to learn some new things about your body or you see See how much it ends up carrying over into another goal yeah. that you may want no, to pursue. That's a, you guys make great points because I think people. And by the way, if you'll what you'll notice that Justin and Adam just said were all kinds of different goals. I think sometimes people get stuck in the the basic goals: uh, get leaner, build more, get stronger, get faster. Those are all goals, but you can you can really narrow down to very specifics. Like I just learned this new exercise, I want to get good at it, mm -hmm. or I want to work out with more stamina, or I want to see if I can work out with lighter weight and get a better pump. Like you could create lots of small, and there's literally an infinite number of goals yeah. you can you can create for yourself. But I do again, I want to make the point like if you enjoy exercise for the sake of it. You'll never stop. You know, for me, it's extremely meditative. So it, it doesn't matter if I'm strong. It doesn't matter if I'm weak. It doesn't matter if, if, you know, what's going on in my life. I've had terrible things happen. And then my workouts become a way to help myself process. It's, you know, I've been through times when my body feels great and strong. Now I'm training completely differently. It's a tool and it, it'll it benefit you and it can be molded to benefit you and improve your quality of life. And in a, a, a tremendous amounts of ways. And when you do that, it's like, it's something. And I remember I learned this from some of my old members, like they would come in and work out. And I remember, how did you stay co so consistent? Like, well, it's just, it makes my life better. And it really doesn't matter. I'm always going to do something. And I think that's a good place to be because at some point you get older and your performance is going to decline. You're, you could be the absolute most fit person, most consistent person. But at some point, you're going to end up losing strength no matter what you do. You're going to lose endurance no matter what you do. How the hell could you possibly stay motivated at that point? It's because it's something that improves the quality of life of your life regardless. You know, along those lines, if you've never, if you haven't gone through the webinar that Justin did for Prime, so mapsprimewebinar.com, it's free, watch it. He takes you through the three tests. Sal talking about... Uh, training to enjoy the process and being more meditative and feeling better. Like when was the last time you ever built a routine around literally all the things that your body needs to feel better? 
forget getting super strong or buff or rip. Like when I, and I used to love doing this where do go through an assessment right there, find all your imbalances on your body. And then what the way you build the the routine is around like the fortification sessions is all around things that is going to improve your posture, yeah. improve your health and make you feel better. So you walk out of the gym and it's not like those workouts where you feel taxed and you're broken and you're sweating and you're like, oh my God, I'll be so sore the next day. You walk out of the gym and you're like, whoa. I feel so good. Like I've never felt that good before because I've switched my mentality of the way I'm training right now. So another great pursuit, if that's all you're looking for, is to, to feel better. I agree. Uh, look, if you like our information, you like our content, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have so many guides, so many free resources that we've created for you listeners right here. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin.com. Me at Mind Pump Salon, Adam at Mind Pump Adam.